In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to introduce the concept of working with hold keyframes. Hold keyframes are new to PowerDirector version 19 or PowerDirector 365 if you have the September 2020 update or later. Let me show you a little bit about keyframes in general. We have a clip I'm going to play. And this one simply shows a baseball going from the upper left to the lower right. It spins, it gets smaller, and it moves. So we've keyframed three different values on this image of a baseball. That's a pretty standard use. Let me show you how we're going to change that as we work with hold keyframes. I'm going to take my object and double click on it. That will get into the PIP designer. By the way, we do have tutorials on using the keyframes to do what you just saw here at Sharper Turtle. Once I'm in my PIP designer, I see that I have set three separate keyframes for this particular video. I have a position value in the first frame, a scale value, and a rotation value, all marked by the little diamonds. If you don't see this screen, that means that you have this area collapsed. You can click on the blue arrow on the right, and that will either show that or hide that. So with that exposed again, when I look at the far right, and I notice that I have the same three keyframes, only the values are different. Here the position is all the way to the lower right. The scale is much smaller and the rotation value is different than it was at the beginning. So that's my three keyframes that I've used to make the baseball rotate, shrink, and move from upper left to lower right. What does a hold keyframe do? We're going to explore that in this tutorial. And we're going to deal with this in terms of the rotation. So we're going to change some keyframe values on rotation. What I'm going to do first of all is move about every second in and then on the rotation value I'll right click and click add keyframe. So I've done one at one second, I'll do one at two seconds, right click, add keyframe, and I'll pause while I do several more of these. I've added nine keyframes approximately one second apart on the rotation value. Now simply doing that shouldn't change anything because the interpolation or the math should not be affected by simply adding a keyframe. And they keep it rotating at the same speed and the other values of course have not changed. Let's see what happens when we stop this and we go back to these keyframes and we start using a hold keyframe. What I'm going to do is click on the first keyframe, but I'm going to drag up a bit so you can see better. And when I right click, it says I'm linear. Now barely off the recording screen, there's the word hold. That's the other option. It can be either linear, which has been our default till now, or hold. I'm gonna click on hold. And you notice immediately that the icon changes. It's half a diamond and half rectangle. What it means is the rotation value and only the rotation value will stay the same from this point up until the next keyframe which happens to be about a second away. Now what happens is the calculations will continue in rotating between this keyframe that's a hold keyframe and the next keyframe but when it hits this point, you will see the difference. It won't be smooth, it will be abrupt. So we're going to go back and we'll play this. What happened was the value of rotation between the keyframe froze. It doesn't rotate, it stops rotating. And then it resumes, but not where it left off. You notice back here, the rotation is with the thread of the ball. When we get to this keyframe, it's rotated around because it doesn't affect the math, as it were, as it applies to the object. I'm going to right click on the next one and do hold, and we'll do every other one. And we'll change it from a linear value 
to a hold value. And let's look at the difference when we apply it on and off in the course of this clip. That's the impact of a hold keyframe on an object. We can use this on all of the values that we keyframe in this particular clip or just some of them. In this case, we only worked on rotation. I'm going to click on OK. And then when we move back, I'm going to show you another application where we could use it, for example, with titles. I turn my title track off, but I have a title called Baseball. I have keyframed that particular title. And in this case, you notice I have a hold keyframe on position then a standard keyframe, another standard keyframe, and a final standard keyframe. Let's see what happens when we play this clip using these particular keyframes on a title as well as on the image of the baseball. You notice what happened. The baseball image was down at the center and then it popped up at the right. What was going on? Well, that's what happened when we use our hold keyframe because here we used it on position. Back here, we have the position at the bottom and the next keyframe has it at the upper right. So we actually changed the position value of this keyframe, but because this is a hold, it kind of moved in secret, as it were, and popped up at the upper right corner. This is a very interesting way to make something seem to move and appear at a different place in your video than it was before. Now there are all kinds of ways in which you com can combine the hold keyframe with other features. That's more advanced. We just want to introduce you to the concept. So wherever you want to freeze one of the values of an item you're keyframing, use a hold. But remember, when you get to the next keyframe, you will not have a smooth transition, but an abrupt one. But sometimes that's just what we want when we're doing editing in PowerDirector.